Everybody, welcome back to the Sales Community Exec event, The Cube After Dark. I'm here with my good friend, Tom LaHive, who runs Partner Enablement at CyberArk. Tom, good to see you. Dave, great to see you, man. Thanks for making some time. You guys just coming off your big conference. The heat. I, I got to start. What's it like out there? What, what are the customer conversations like? It's actually pretty interesting right now. So last week, 50 or so customer conversations, and I'm seeing themes. And theme number one here is at CyberArk, and we're not unlike any other security company out here, is the attack vector that um, all of our customers are getting exposed to is widening. Historically, it's been the attack vector has been humans. I'm going to go after the human identity, the person, right? But now with it will be Internet of Things, web-based applications, uh, cloud-based systems, the attack vector went from humans to non-human identities. So as I talked to customers over the last week, they're all like, hey, I love CyberArk. I'm using your PAM, your, your PAM offering in order to secure all my human identities. Tell me what you can do for my non-human identities. And those could be endpoint devices, operating systems, applications, web apps, Internet of Things, um, OT devices, you name it out there, right? So that's sort of like a, real, a large market that needs a lot of help. Tell us about the event. Where was it? You know, what was, what was the profile? How, yeah, how was, big it was, was it? It was a customer event. You know, there was, um, you know, there was, you know, the hundreds and hundreds, I can't, I can't get in the details, but let's just say uh, hundreds of customers at it. Um, right now we're in the middle of something called IWT. You would know about our impact event in Boston. Now we're taking that to the streets. So we have an IWT or Impact World Tour event throughout major cities throughout the whole world. So this is an example of one Did of them. Did you have like every event, you know, what we do in theCUBE, every event we go to, there's an AI theme. What was, what were, there, were there a lot of questions about AI? Did you have an AI sort of pitch yeah. that you're offering, a roadmap? What was that discussion like? Yeah, yeah. Gen AI, Gen AI right. is like, it's the talk of town. It is, um, it's both a offense and a defense strategy, right? How is CyberArk utilizing Gen AI today and tomorrow in order to make a more secure environment? To counter, obviously, all the exposures that the, ha the bad apples are doing out there, utilizing AI to increase the level of attack. So it's like, we get one, they get one. We get one, they get one. But AI is going to be embedded across our entire portfolio, you know, soon. Do you think that AI will, will benefit uh, attackers more or defenders? That's right. Who knows, Dave? I mean, Come on, you, know, you used to be yeah. an analyst, Tom. Yeah, th those are the days you're now operating like, you know, on, on business facts, that sort of thing, and you know, where it's going, I, I honestly, I do I, not let me, know. Let me throw okay. a premise out. I would say near term, it's probably more advantageous for the attackers because they can write better phishing emails. Yeah, well. But, but eventually, you get the, the, the tech in the hands of the good guys, and they'll be able to counter. And then, you know, like you said, it's a cat and mouse game. Sure. But everything maybe gets compressed. You buy that premise. Uh, yeah, so, um, so think about the, the uh, utilization of AI right now, whatever AI tool it may be. It's not as like, like you know, um, download it from anywhere and implement it into my solution, no matter what that solution may be, right? That requires a level of intellect and knowledge of how to utilize Gen AI and AI in its truest, in its most capable fashion, right? So those that have the most AI expertise right now win. CyberArk's fortunate, we have a large team of engineers that are highly skilled in this whole thing. So for now, I would say, you know, the, the um, defenders solutions here, the cybersecurity guys, definitely have a leg up. Are there going to be smart hackers out there that have similar capabilities? Yeah, right, possibly. But once again, though, it is, uh, it's a mad hockey game. So from a partner standpoint, how do you spend your time? What, are the, what makes an ideal partner? You know, your, part of your job is to create sort of you know, the, the, the power of many is greater than sure. you know, the capabilities of one. Who are the, you know, your big partners? Where are you getting leverage? How do you, how do you approach, you know, building that partner ecosystem? So first off, we are, our portfolio, everyone knows CyberArk as PAM, but our identity security portfolio actually goes after five different areas, like cloud security, endpoint management, DevOps, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. okay? So when we look at partners, we want to see which partners can be aligned each via each of these five different capabilities across our identity security portfolio. That's number one. Secondly, here's when I, we're looking for an ideal partner, um, we want to talk about um, is there a one plus one equals something more than just to us to a combined solution together across each of those things. And that one plus one, the, the variables that go into it could be the technology and also like the soft side of the whole thing. How easy are they to do business with? How easy are they to help co-develop these integrations? How about support that integration? Okay, once that integration is completed and supported and available to the marketplace, is that partner willing to work with us on a joint go-to-market strategy? So we have 235 technology partners, and we've narrowed it down to approximately 10, 10 organizations that are all in on CyberArk. 
Examples are AWS, Red Hat, SailPoint, Tenable, um, uh, Spheres, an upcoming relatively smaller company, Palo Alto Networks, up and coming relationship, Central One, up and coming relationship, and there's a couple others that will be announcing over the next month or so. That's great. Uh, um, what are you seeing out there? So as we entered 2023, um, it looked like cyber was going to be somewhat immune from the macro headwinds. And then that changed a little bit, sort of the springtime, things got a little, and then we've seen, you know, a lot of, you know, good potential sort of exiting the summer. Things were pretty strong and cyber's held up pretty well. You're seeing AI spending go up, but, but the overall top line spending's not growing. You know, we follow this stuff pretty close, closely. So it's almost like they're stealing from, you know, one bucket to pay for some of the AI. Seems like cyber's holding up pretty well. What are you seeing in the space? Yeah, I mean, I can't talk about quarterly trends, yeah, right? We're obviously in a quiet period, I mean, but just, just generally in the Yeah, but generally speaking budgets, here is like, you know, so whether you say it's a problem with world politics, world dynamics, geopolitical nation states, um, you know, of course, you know, cyber is going to be one of those things that's going to be a constant for the better, for, for good and for bad, right? Um, our, our mantra here is we want to secure the entire, all identities for the entire world. Okay, that's what CyberArk wants to do. We want to secure every identity from cyber theft. All right. So, you know, that's a big market. Mm -hmm. And right now we've talked about, you know, securing like very large organizations here. But wouldn't it be great if that capability goes across many markets, right? So that's sort of where CyberArk is going overall. And every single market you look out there is going to require more intelligent cybersecurity controls in order to protect themselves. When CyberArk wins, why does it win? And where do you feel like customers are asking you to uh, do a better job? Our winning thing is we start with Pam. We want to secure those human identities, mm -hmm. okay? And we are one of the market creators of that segment. We've been doing this now since the early 2000s. Um, so that's our, that, that's our foundation offering, okay? And then from that foundation offering, the beauty here is I mentioned we have four other segments that are connected to securing that, that, that privilege access management, that, 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 that human identity, right? We have, like I mentioned, endpoint security, tie-ins to ServiceNow as an example. We have cloud security, tie-ins to AWS, and I can go on and on and on and on. So that's the unique part of CyberArk. Here's we start with Pam, and then customers realize the full breadth of our capabilities to secure non-human identities and more human identities across their entire IT environment, whether it be on-prem, cloud-based, hybrid environment, as well as integrated into like their key IT tools. I mentioned ServiceNow as an example. Explain why PAM, Privileged Access Management, is so important um, in the context of, I mean, that's, that's where if you can get the keys to the kingdom and you started there, uh, explain why that's so critical to organizations. Um, you know, you got to start you know, with um, you know, making sure that the right people have security, uh, are, um, the right people have the access to the right systems for the right amount of time. All right, and therefore, if there was an attack to happen, you limit that throughout, you know, you limit that, um, that sprawl, right? And that's what we do really, really well. Um, so, you know, it is a necessary item. It has a compliance requirement associated with it. It is a budget line, line, item, line item in every single CISO's account here. And, you know, we invented that marketplace. Is zero trust a buzzword or is it becoming real? Real. Okay, how do you help, or how do I, do, do organizations struggle with operationalizing zero trust and can CyberArk help them? Yeah, I mean, zero trust means many things to many different people, particularly as the human identity becomes morphed much more easily now with AI tools, as you mentioned inside there. So, um, you know, there, so CyberArk, we have a series of solutions on securing that human identity um, to, um, you know, minimize the exposure and, I don't know, move on from there. Yeah, good. All right, Tom, hey, thanks very All much, right. man. Really okay. appreciate your time, and uh, thanks for coming back in the cave. Dave, thanks for having me. By the way, Dave, you know, I uh, first worked for you in 19, should we say the year? 90, ready? Was it? Four. 94. And uh, right now we're 23, so now we're, wow. we are, yeah, so it's almost. So Tom and I worked at IEC together. And we, we crushed it well, yeah. back then. Well, we're having like a 30 and, uh, year friendship business reunion coming right, up I mean, soon, we, right? We really did, did quite some damage in the marketplace, right? I mean, that was kind of the ascendancy of IDC's turnaround, the their mm -hmm. early, early 90s and then grew. And then, because I let you left and when, when did you leave? I left in 97. 97. And, and, and I was at a, um, at a management meeting today in an offsite, and they were talking about um, uh, 
hyper focus, um, customer centricity, mm -hmm. right? Um, and the ability to like to realize those market opportunities and to pivot and execute. And we were bringing up examples of, of companies that we were analyzing in the 1990s and very specific things they did. The professors bringing that up in front of the whole management team. So what we were experiencing in the 1990s, right, continued to rebirth itself in the early 2000s and the 2010s, et cetera, and, and even to today. So we were, those were epic times that we experienced. In a lot of ways, the same wine, new bottle, but of course, there's a new tech stack. All right, Tom, <laughs> yeah. we gotta go. All right. All right, thank you for watching this episode of the sales community event here, theCUBE After Dark. Keep right there, we'll be back for more coverage right after this break. Thank you.